Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise, praise the Lord, Lord everybody. Lord. Somebody give God a shout of praise in the room. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, you deserve all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. How many of you know he deserves it on this morning? He deserves our best worship. He deserves our best praise, God. God, you've been too good to us. God, we give you all the glory. God, we give you all the honor. Can we do that right there? Can we begin to lift up our hands and begin to give him what he deserves in this room? Can you begin to give him what he deserves in this room? I tell you to just use your voice. Somebody begin to open up your mouth all over this room and give him what he is due on this morning. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Say my hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, just replace your heart with your mouth and tell them say, My hallelujah belongs to you. Can we declare and say, You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. Let's listen to the My hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, just declare that right there. Say, My hallelujah, my hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, can you just stretch your hands and tell them, Say, My hallelujah, my hallelujah belongs to you. Anybody got a hallelujah in the belly? Somebody declare it. Say, My hallelujah belongs to you. Can we tell them why I say you deserve, you deserve, you deserve it, you deserve it, you deserve it. Oh, can we say all the glory, say all of the glory belongs to you. Oh, can somebody give them glory on this morning? Say, all the glory belongs, all the glory belongs to you. Can you clap it right there? Say, all the glory belongs, all the glory it belongs to you. Oh, somebody to clap it right there. Say, all of the glory belongs. Oh, can we lift it up real big all over this room? Yeah, you deserve, you deserve. <laughs> Say you deserve it. it. The cry of our hearts, you deserve, deserve it. Oh, hallelujah, you deserve it. it. You deserve it. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. You deserve it. Oh, somebody say, You deserve it. Woo! Tell them, say, You deserve it. You deserve it. Oh, say, You deserve it. The cry of our hearts, You deserve it. The fruit of our lips, You deserve it. Hey! You deserve it. Can we do it one more time? Can we lift it up all over the room when we say hallelujah? hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. And all the glory. And all the honor. And all the praise. You deserve it. Say you deserve it. You deserve it. Oh, the class say you deserve it. Yeah, you deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. Oh, that's it right there. Say you deserve it. Jesus, you deserve it, Jesus. Yeah, you deserve it. 
So my hallelujah belongs to you. Let's just lift it up right there. Say my hallelujah. Say my hallelujah belongs to you. <laughs> we don't need any music right yet. Say my hallelujah. Say my hallelujah belongs to you. Somebody just lift it up right there. When it touch your spirit, say my hallelujah belongs to you. You can we do it one more time? Say my hallelujah, my hallelujah belongs to you. Say my hallelujah, yeah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Somebody give God praise right there. Ooh, Somebody give God praise right there. Somebody open up your mouth and give them your best hallelujah. Somebody open up your mouth and give them your best hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, you deserve it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They used to say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Is anybody glad to be on in the house of the Lord just one more time? Just one more time. And so today we give you glory. We give you honor and God, we give you praise because it was you and not we ourselves that created us. So can you put your hands on it? God, we give you glory. God, we give you honor and God, we give you praise this morning. Hey. Woo. Hey. Oh, yeah. Let's do it together. Say. When you come into his presence, lifting up the name of Jesus, and you hear the music playing, and you see the people praising, just forget about your worries, let your troubles fall behind you, don't you wait another minute, just get up and on your feet and say, sing it, jump it, leave it, make it loud, make it crazy, stop rejoicing, Praise it, lift it, raise it, make it loud, make it pop, glorious, somebody give them a glorious praise, yeah, oh yeah, oh let's do it again, say, when you come, when you come, lifting up the name of Jesus, and you hear the music playing, and you see the people praising, just forget about your words. Let your troubles fall behind you. Don't you wait another minute. Just get up and on your feet and sing it, jump it, leap it. Make it loud, make it spread. Stop rejoicing, praise it, lift it, raise it. Make it loud, make it spread. Get to dancing, sing it, jump it. Make it loud, make it pray. Stop the choices, praise it, lift it, praise it. Make it loud, make it pray. Glorious, glorious. Somebody shout and give them glory. Oh, look at your neighbor say, I was created to praise him. Look at somebody and say, I was created to lift the name of Jesus high. Yeah. I, was. I was created to make the glory glorious. Gotta make it glorious. I was created to make. I was created to make your glory glorious. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.
speak his praise. Glorious. Glorious. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know what? Situations will come. Stuff will happen to try to take your praise. But don't allow it. Don't allow it. We were created. We were created. Yeah, you know, the trees can praise them and that's all good. But we were created to make his praise glorious. Amen. Hallelujah. And guess what? He's worth that. He is worth that. Amen. Guess what? We got up this morning. Youth and activities of our limbs. Yeah, stuff might have happened this morning that would try to distract us to try to get our minds off of who he is. But guess what? When we know who he is, it doesn't really matter what happens. We know that we were created to praise him, to glorify him, to honor him. Amen. Amen. Y'all, come on. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it happened, but it's okay. All is well. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All is well. Glory to God. Well, good morning, Revealing Truth Ministries, Ocala. Those of you in the sanctuary and those of you that are watching us online, today is a great day. Hallelujah. To have a great day. Amen. It's a great day to have a great day. And so we choose to praise him this day. Amen. Glory to God. Well, at this time, we're going to go ahead. We're going to turn our attentions to the screens, and we're going to say our confessions together. Amen. Amen. Father God, we thank you for the vision of Revealing Truth Ministries Ocala. We are disciples of Jesus Christ and are committed to reach out with agape love, reclaim through godly deeds, and restore by revealing the truth of God's word, ultimately leading others to a relationship with you. We thank you, Father, that the vision is fulfilled through our mission to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ by promoting family unity, educational development, community outreach, and economic empowerment. And that according to your word in Jeremiah 33 and 6, you will reveal to us the abundance of peace, prosperity, security, stability, health, healing, and truth. And so it is in heaven, and so we receive it on earth. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so it is in heaven. And so we receive it on earth. Amen. Glory to God. Well, you can have your seat for just a moment. If you choose as we go into our weekly announcements. All right, y'all, it's here. This Saturday. Hallelujah. It is here. We will be celebrating our pastor's 50th birthday with a black and gold celebration amen it is here so this saturday at 5 p.m we want to see you at the weber center amen see you at the weber center we look forward to celebrating with you and yes again there is going to be some dancing but everything is going to be done decently and in order. Amen. We are still saved. Amen. And God wants us to rejoice and celebrate. Amen. 
Hallelujah. All right. And then to conclude our pastor's birthday celebration, um, we're going to welcome our guest speaker for next Sunday, Bishop Herbert Bailey from Right Direction in South Carolina. Hallelujah. He will be in the house. Amen. Glory to God. Our spiritual mentors, and we are excited about it. And that is actually our pastor's birthday. So next Sunday, the 18th, is actually his birthday. So we're going to continue celebrating. Amen? All right. And then um, on next Friday, Friday, July 23rd, we will be having our ushers and greeters training. It was actually rescheduled from this past Friday to next Friday. So next Friday, well, Friday after, the 23rd, um, it's going to be here at the church at 6 p.m., so if you are looking to serve, amen, glory to God, and you feel like you have that smile and that and that pizzazz about you that you can usher in people without looking mean at them, amen, then we want you to be at the training, amen. We want some Holy Ghost filled ushers, amen, glory to God, some people that can make some people feel warm when they come in. Don't you like going... Cheer said, sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name, right? Sometimes you want to go to a place where you know what I've been struggling and dealing with stuff all week long. Let me get to the house of the Lord where I know I'm going to be loved on, where I know I'm going to be embraced, where I'm going to be encouraged and not discouraged. Amen. Hallelujah. So if that's you, if you fit that bill, amen, then come on out and be with us on next Friday, the 23rd. And then are you a person of influence in ministry, business, or on your job, or any area of life? Hey, you could be the manager of your house. Amen. You can be, you should be the manager of your house. Amen. Then join Pastor Smith and I on August the 5th and 6th for the Global Leadership Summit at Right Direction Church in South Carolina. Or you can also go online. And you can sign up to be a part of the Global Leadership Summit there as well. I promise you, this is going to be so, so awesome. Last year, we were able to go to South Carolina. You know what? We were like, okay, this is so impactful to not just business, but just in life. To be able to sit around like-minded people. And I'm not going to go into all of that because I know Pastor going to say something about it. But it is just going to be so awesome. So go to Right Direction dot info and then backslash go global leadership summit and go ahead and sign up to either join us in south carolina or to um attend online amen amen and then ladies i kind of want to put something on your mind on august the 25th and 26th how many of y'all are ready for a women's conference like to be ignited to be to be excited about okay okay the pandemic, thank God, you know, is behind us. It shed it all some things. But now it's time for us to get back on fire for the things of God. So on August the 25th and 26th, um, Dr. Marsha Bailey will be having her first in-person women's event. And that is going to be the Ignite Empowerment Conference with Prophetess Brenda Todd and Pastor Mary Seabright. Y'all want to be there. If you cannot, then guess what? It's going to be online. But it's something that's just so much better when it's in person. Just like coming to church, right? You can get it online, and we thank God for We thank God for y'all tuning in online. Please don't turn it off. Don't turn it off. But something about being in the house. Amen? So be in the house if you can. And then for more details, again, go to rightdirect.com. And then just a couple of other reminders. Just remember that this Wednesday is our men and women's breakout sessions. So the men will be here. Um, the women will be on Zoom. And again, we'll just talk about things that are concerning us. Today we'll be having our middle and high school breakout session instead of next Sunday because we want everybody to be able to hear the ministry gift of Dr. Bailey. So instead of the third Sunday, we're going to do the second Sunday, which is today. And then for all of our other announcements, visit our Facebook page or revealingtruthocc.org to keep up with what's happening 
in the ministry. Amen. Amen. Well, and then invite others. Take time to share God's love and invite others to experience it as well. When you invite them, when you invite them to church. Amen. And then our first time guests, thank you so much for being here with us in the sanctuary. For those of you that are online, thank you, thank you, thank you. We want to reach out to those that are online and just say thank you. And then those that are in the sanctuary, we have a gift of appreciation for you. So after service, my husband and I just kind of want to love on you. Amen. Amen. Well, at this time, we will turn it back over to our praise team. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, and guess what? They looking for people to serve too. Amen. Yes. Every ministry in the church is looking for people to serve. Yes. Amen. Yes. Glory to God. Praise Amen. the Lord, everybody. Praise the oh, Lord. you can stand up to your feet. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Look at somebody and say, there's a miracle that just hit my road. There's a, I declare, I declare that there's a miracle that just hit my road. There's a miracle that just hit your house. There's a miracle while you're in his house worshiping. He is at your house working. There's a miracle. So we're going to put a praise on it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. Somebody shout glory. Somebody shout glory. Hallelujah! Put your hands on it! Somebody shout glory in the room! Hey, yeah. We might as well do it like this. Hey. There's a miracle in this room with mine. Oh, to clap it over your life, say, there's a healing in this room. Who is it here for, say? There's a breakthrough in this room. There's a breakthrough in this room. With my, with my oh, this is your confession right here, say. So what you gonna do, say? So I'm gonna put a praise on Oh, that's your cue right there to go crazy, say. I'm gonna put a praise. I'm gonna put a praise on you. Yeah, say. So I'm gonna put a praise. So I'm gonna put a praise on Oh, I need about 50 folks to put a praise on I'm gonna put a praise on Go to church right here, say, I'm gonna put a praise. I'm gonna put a praise on. Oh, like a miracle just hit your house, say, so I'm gonna put a praise. Oh, somebody do it right there, say, I'm gonna put a praise. Oh, you ought to do it right there, say, what you gonna do, say, so I'm gonna put a praise. Oh, you ought to declare there's a miracle, say, I'm gonna put a praise. you to make some noise in this room uh, like you know a miracle just popped up in your household like you know a miracle just took place in your life <laughs> we don't praise him for only what he's done but we praise him for what he's about to do I tell you to shout and put a down payment on your miracle I said shout like you're putting a down payment on your miracle Ah, let me come over here. I said shout. I said shout. Uh, I said shout. Uh, oh, somebody didn't come to play with it today. Everybody jump right here. Oh, I take you to move your feet. I should jump. I declare chains are breaking off your household. Hey, hey. Everybody jump what? That's what I'm talking about. That's the praise I'm talking about. So I'm gonna put it quick. So I'm gonna. There's a praise we like to call the Takwa praise. And that's the clapping of the hands. So I need you to put your hands together like it's already bigger. Everybody clap what? Oh, that means and it is so. Whatever you've been praying, I can't pray. Oh, do it right here, say. So I'm gonna put a prayer. 
Somebody say glory. glory. Somebody shout glory. glory. Look at somebody and say, it's for me, it's for me, it's, it's for, for me. me. Look at somebody and say, it's for me, it's for me, it's for me. Ramamaya kande de 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 bosoya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> it says as the praises go up, the blessings come down. I believe that you just released something into your life. I believe that you just released a miracle into your family. If you believe that, just throw your hands up and say, it's for me, it's for me. It's for me, it's for me. Oh, I need about 30 people who've been expecting God to do something. I, I need about 30 people who are expecting a chain to break in them. Somebody say, it's for me, it's for me, it's for me. <laughs> Hallelujah. God, we glorify you. God, we magnify you. God, we exalt you, God. God, your name is greater than any other name. God, we give you glory on today. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Can you just lift your hands up in this moment? Can we? Can we do this all over the room? It's our act of surrenderance. Just lift your hands real high. Let him see you. Let him see you. This is our white flag to him. And begin to use your lips and begin to glorify him. Begin to welcome him into this room. Tell him how much he's been to your family. Tell him how much he's been in your life. Just use your voice. Use your. He's waiting to hear your voice. He's waiting to hear your voice. Angels are dispatching at the sound of your. Oh, raise it in the room. Oh, raise it in the room. Raise it in the room. I dare you to take it off mute just begin to worship in this room begin to worship in this room begin to worship in the room god you've been too good let's do that for about 30 seconds let's welcome him into this rig let's serenade the sweet name of jesus god we give you glory god if we give you honor god you and you alone deserves it god you and you alone deserves it Oh, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Somebody who doesn't need a praise team leader to go before the throne and begin to open up your mouth and glorify him for being a great God. Woo, that's it, that's it. That's it, that's it, that's it. That's it, that's it, that's it. <laughs> that's the one, that's the one, that's the worship, that's the one. That's the worship, that's the one. He's listening, he's moving, he's breathing on your worship. He is moving in your worship. Woo, it's for your glory, we will do anything. God, we will do anything just to see you. God, we will do anything just to see you. God, we want to see you, we want to be where you are. Continue to lift your worship. Tell him that you want to be where he is. Tell him that he want to be where he is. Woo! In your presence, there's fullness of joy, so I got to be there. In your presence, there is peace, so I want to be there. Woo! Lord, if I find favor in your sight, Say the worshipers say, Lord, please ask him, say, hear my heart's cry. Tell him, say, I'm desperately waiting, say, to be where you are. What will you do, worshipers say, I'll cross the hardest desert. Tell him, say, I'll travel near. For your glory, Woo. it's real simple. Say, I will do anything Woo. just to see you, to behold you as my king. Oh, just the worshipers say, For your glory, Woo. say, I will do. Oh, he hears you say, just see you, to behold, to behold you as my king. Oh, let's lift it up right here. Say, Lord, if I, Lord, if I, say, find favor, say, find favor in your sight. Sing, Lord, please, Lord, please, Lord, please, hear my cry. Desperately waiting. Desperately waiting. 
Just to be where you are. Just to be where you are. Tell them, say, I'll cross the hot desert. I'll cross the hot desert. I'll travel near a Not just throw your hands up right here. For your glory. For your glory. I will do. I will do. Tell him it's just, just to see you. God, we really want to see you. To behold, to oh, behold you as my King. For your glory. For your glory. Yeah. I will do, I, I will, will do, do it. Just to, just to see you. We just want to see the King of Kings say, To behold. Be oh, just do a real big right here. Say, for your, for your glory, yeah, I will do, I will do, whatever it takes, Jesus, just to see you, God, we really want to see you, to be whole, oh, do it one more time, let's just say, for your glory, for your glory, I will do, I will do, just to see you, just to see you. God, I really want to see you, yeah, to be whole, you as, oh, put my time for your glory, for your glory, oh, let them know, say, I will do, I will do, God, will do whatever it takes, Jesus, it's just to see you, God, we really want to see you, yeah, to be whole, I wanna be where you are. I gotta be where you are. Oh, make that your testimony and say, I wanna be where. That's it right there. Say, I gotta be where. It doesn't matter where you are, Jesus. Say, I wanna be where you are. I gotta be. I gotta be where. God is dwelling in your presence in that secret place. Say. I want to be where you are Living in your presence, Lord I gotta be where you are I want to be, want to be where you are Oh, let them know, see, I gotta be where you are I gotta be where you are Oh, he's listening, oh, he's listening Tell him, say, I want to be where you are I gotta be, gotta be where you are Begin to take about 30 seconds and begin to give him a worship and declare to him that you gotta be where he is. Peace is at your presence, joy is at your presence, patience is at your presence, love is in your presence. I gotta be where you are, I wanna be where you are, say, I wanna be there. I gotta be where you are. I 
wanna be where you are. I gotta be where you are. Somebody bless him right here. Somebody bless him right here. Somebody lift your hands in adoration unto our Father and bless the name of Jesus. Yeah, we just wanna be where you are. We gotta be where you are. Yes, we do. Hallelujah. Somebody magnify our God. Somebody exalt our God right there. Somebody begin to use your voice, use your key, and exalt the name of Jesus. Begin to open up your mouth and lift up a sound from the earth. God, we want to be where you are. God, we have to be where you are. It's dwelling in your presence. Oh, I feel a sweet smell of worship in this room. I, can we continue in this sweet worship right here? Can we? I see. God, we want to be where you are. 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 We got to be where you are. We want to be there. There's something about being in the presence of God that is, it's just a peace about being in the presence of God that just flows like a river, that, like a breath of fresh wind just swept across the room. You may be caring about the worries and anxieties of the world, but when you step into the presence, when you step into the presence of God, there is just a, a peace it's as, 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 as calm as a, as a river as calm as a river Jesus and I prophesied somebody has been looking for peace and I don't know who this is for I don't I just hear the Holy Spirit just saying in this moment and this is for you I dare you to just lift your hands up for the prophetic word of the Lord he's saying I'm about to restore to you joy again I I'm about to restore to you healing again I'm a, I'm about to heal your broken heart I'm a, I'm about to mend your broken heart I've seen you crying at night I've seen you crying when you are alone but I'm about to make you complete again I'm about to make you whole again I'm about to bring joy back into your life. I'm about to put a smile back on your face. And I don't know who that is for. I believe the prophetic word in the moment. Oh, just, just throw your hands up if it's for you. If, if it's for you, he said, I'm restoring you again. I, I'm feeling you again. I'm, I'm making you complete again. Oh, I see you, worshiper. I, I see you, worshiper. I, I see you, worshiper. Shake it for me. It's 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 for me. <laughs> he says, I'm about to do a new thing. Can't you see it? Words cannot compare. Woo! Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Woo! The good things that I'm about to do for you. So he says, I just want you to be at my feet. <laughs> and a lot of the times we switch up our position. We, <laughs> we switch up our position. We switch up our posture. We, we move away from the throne. But the amazing thing about our God, he has always been on the throne. He has always been in the same position. <laughs> With his arm out, with his hands out, ready to receive you again. So he says, I'm about to heal you again. I'm about to, I'm about to mend you again. I don't know who this is for, but there's about 10 people in this room who've been dealing with a broken heart. And I don't know why this is ringing in my spirit. I just, I just have to say what the Holy Spirit is telling me. And I don't, I don't know who needs to receive this. But he says, I'm about to make your heart new. You've been, you've been caring about what people may think. You've been, somebody wasn't consistent in your life. Something wasn't consistent in your life. Something just ended. And I don't know who, who this is for. I don't know who it's for. But he says, I'm about to do a new thing. I'm, a, I'm about to do a new thing. And like I said, I don't... I just believe in the prophetic word of the Lord and I can't, I can't move without telling you 
what he's telling me. So if you believe the prophetic word of the Lord and if you receive it over your life, I dare you to just lift your hands and say, he's about to do it. He's, a, he's about to do it. He's about to do it. He's about, oh, switch it up. Oh, he just told me to switch it up. He just said, he just did it. 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 Oh, I dare you to receive it. He just did it. He just did it. I see some of you trying to hold in your cry, but he's like, release it to me. <laughs> it's okay, you can release it to me. I'm your comfort, I'm your, I'm your peace. Uh, you don't have to hold it back. There's, the person beside you does not have my relationship with you. The person behind you is not gonna do for you what I can do. So he's saying surrender. You're all to me. I'm about to do a new thing. I'm about to do a new thing. <laughs> you know, they used to say, late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around and it's going to work from your favor. Somebody just throw your hands up and say, it's working, it's working, it's working. Somebody declare on your life, over your family, over your children, over your spouse and say, it's working, it's working, it's working. It's working, it's working, it's working, it's working. Oh, I need to move. Oh, it's working, it's working. It's working, it's working. Oh, I see, I hear that ringing in the spirit. It's working, it's working, it's working, it's working. It's working, it's working, it's working, it's working. It's it's working out for me. 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 Woo! <laughs> I tell you to when you begin to see that situation arrive in your household. Uh, when you begin to step in your household uh, and the kids acting crazy and the relationship is acting crazy, I dare you to just say it's working out for me. It's working out for me. <laughs> I dare you to speak over your situation and say it's it's working out for me. <laughs> Oh, I don't know who that is for, but when you go about your week and situation arise, just declare it. It's working out for me. It's working out for me. It's working out for me. Touch your neighbor and say, it's working out for you. It's working out for you. Touch your neighbor and say, it's working out for you. Prophesy. It's called a prophecy. Let them know it's working out for you. It's, it's working out for you. It's working out for you. Hallelujah. It's working out. It's working out. All things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. And they that are called according to his purpose. It's working out. It's working out. <laughs> it's already worked out. It's already done. In Jesus' name. We declare it and we decree it. It's already done. In Jesus' name. I already got enough to pay my bills. It's already done. I already got enough to buy grocery for the house. It's already done. Hallelujah. I got peace. That's the pastor's own understanding. It's already done. Hallelujah. Well, give God glory. You can stand to your feet. Give God glory. Give God glory. Stand to your feet. Amen. Thank you, praise team. Thank you so much. Glory to God of you. Can stand. It's already done. Somebody just declare it. It's already done. Do you believe that? It's already done. Oh my God. Ah, uh, it is finished. It is finished. It is finished. Oh Jesus said, I've done it. I've done it, and it's already done. Declare the Lord. Hmm. Thank you so much. Oh, God, God, you're so wonderful. Oh, God, you're magnificent and we give you glory. God, we give you praise. There's none like you. 
There's none like you, God. And we say thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. If we had 10,000 tongues, it wouldn't be enough to say thank you, Father, for what you've already done. Oh, God, we declare it's done. And it is well. Amen. 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 To God be the glory for the things that he has done. Thank you for being here. Give God glory. Give God glory. Thank you for watching us online today. Amen. We give God glory, honor, and praise for all that he's already done. Amen. All right. We're so excited about what's about to happen on this week. Amen. I told you to stand up, but you can sit down. I'm not talking a bit. I want y'all to stand up looking at me while I'm talking a little bit. So then I'll get ready to do it off. But I want to just say this. Um, on this week, somebody say this week. This Friday, July 16th. Somebody say it again. This Friday is July 16th. Okay. So July 16th is Pastor T's birthday. Amen. Y'all, she's been so wrapped up in, in, in our, my birthday celebration. We forget, don't forget about it. July 16th. It's my sugar sugar birthday. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So it's my sweetie birthday. So don't forget about her. You can, you know, send her cash app, whatever you want. She got cash app, Latasha Smith, 16. Dollar sign. Dollar sign. So send our cash app to let her know you appreciate her cards, whatever. Let her know you appreciate it. We do appreciate you. We love you and we appreciate you. Amen? Amen. So y'all help us celebrate her on, on this Friday. It's her birthday. Call her, text her if you have a number. Text her if you have, you know, on Facebook, friends, send us a shout out, whatever. Just send us a love this week. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 So we're thanking God. For that, also, we're so excited about um, this Sunday. We will. It is my birthday this Sunday. Hallelujah! A birthday Friday. My birthday is Sunday, and we will have. Uh, and my son's Brandon's birthday is next Tuesday, the twentieth. So we we celebrate birthdays in in Ju July whole week. We usually do some whole week. It's always been Brandon's focus, but it's it's this is this is my year this year. It's the golden year. Hallelujah. Uh, everything be him. Don't forget about us. You know, we just always focus on Brandon's birthday. But this is my 50th, so it's a special time this year. Amen? You don't turn 50 but once. So I'm going to enjoy it and live life to the fullest till it overflow. Hallelujah. I'm blessed, and I'm living my blessed life. Amen. Amen. So we just want to think, I'm, I'm excited, you know, on this Sunday we will have guests in here. So look, guys, get here um, early. Amen. Get a, get a seat. We're going to have a lot of my friends are going to come from Atlanta, got some frat brothers coming from Huntsville, I got frat brothers coming from California, I got a frat brother coming from Atlanta, um, so they're coming to, 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 to celebrate with us, amen? So y'all be, y'all get here so you can get a seat. You know we start at 10 o'clock, turn to me and say, neighbor, y'all know, y'all know. We, start we start at 10, at 10. amen, amen, 10 o'clock. We've also been given favor um, with the doctor's office on the left side of us. They said we can use their parking lot now. Give God glory. Hallelujah. So if you got overflow, you can park over here. You can park over there. We got enough parking everywhere, all around us. And across the street, they've already, they bought this property over here, but I'm believing God, they, they might give it to us. We got some more stuff we got to do. Probably right across the street from us. They, they bought that sometime about two years ago. They ain't, they ain't putting that up. It's supposed to be another doctor's office over there. But that'll be more parking for us, and they just build a building for us, and we'll take it over the end. Hallelujah. Amen. Then we're looking at, you know, behind us. I don't know if y'all ever walked to the end of our parking lot. There's an empty field back there where there's a barn. And I can envision us cutting a hole through that back and opening up our campus and build some old stuff back there. I'm telling you, I'm just dreaming what God is about to do. So I need you to put your faith on my faith. We're doing some things. We're going to do some things. Amen. We still got work to do. So at this time, it's time for us to be blessed in our giving. Amen. 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 Also, we're going to have our spiritual mentor in town. I'm so glad. Hallelujah, blessed uh, that we're going to have Bishop Her Herbert Bailey and Dr. Marsha Bailey here with us on Sunday morning. Amen. Amen, Dr. Adan. Come on, give God praise. They've been in ministry at Right Direction over, over 25 years. He's also a fraternity brother of mine, so, you know, we, he's the alpha. You know, that's the only fraternity that is, and somebody else will disagree with me, but since I'm talking, alpha is the only fraternity that really is, but anyway, I ain't going to tell him to go there. First of all. Uh, they're going to get me. I know they're going to get me, but it's okay. <laughs> okay, so he's going to be here bringing the word. And I thank God that, you know, he thought enough about us to come. He's told me, he said, Pastor, I've been pastoring 25 years. 
And I've only left my pulpit six times in 25 years, and you'll be number six. I said, well, thank you. I was hoping and praying you'll come on down here. Amen. <laughs> so he came on down, and him and Dr. Marshall. I mean, uh, usually it's like, it's like us when I leave, Pastor T would teach, but both of them are coming. And it's such a blessing to have a husband and wife team um, that's doing ministry in, in, in South Carolina. And, and so they're going to be here with us, and then we'll be there with them in August. Amen. And, and so in August, I think uh, Pastor T talked about a little bit in an announcement, but I want to just reiterate the Global uh, Leadership Summit. Did we run the video on the Global Leadership Summit yet? All right. Well, let's go ahead and run the video on the Global Leadership Summit. Then I'll do the offering, and then we will uh, we'll stand and do our offering, and then we'll go from there. So we got a video we're going to run. Watch. It's on the Global Leadership Conference. I'm sorry. I switched it up on him. My bad. My bad. B said, Dad, he's going to take a minute. I'm sorry, B. I got you. But while he's doing that, we thank God that, that God is continuing to bless us and we continue to move forward. Those of you who are watching us online, come on back in the house. Ain't nothing like being in the house of God. Amen? You can watch it all day on your phones and at home, but ain't nothing like being in the house of the Lord. The Bible says, forsake not the assembly of yourselves together. So come on back home. We love you to come on back inside the house. Amen. Are we ready? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Okay. We, he he get in a minute. Here we go. If you're CEO of a business, you've got your own business, if you lead people or, or anything like that, this is a great summit. They give out some great information to help you move your vision in, in ministry. If you're a ministry leader, if you're a business leader, if you're a community leader, if you're a leader, this is a global leadership conference. So they have something on every scale for everybody. Amen? And so we like to um, go. We'll be going in person. Yes, you are a leader. Wherever you may be, you have an influence to strive to become a better version of yourself, a leader that would truly transform those that are around us for the better good. Receive the discount. I would advise you to do it the first time. Last year, my wife and I went. It was an awesome, awesome experience. And so before we left there, we were going to come back. We will lead with integrity, serve with humility. Love sacrificially and stand up when others back down. I want to ask you to go back out there and create psychological safety for your teams. It is more important now than it ever has been. You cannot be what you do not see. And you cannot change what you do not touch. And you cannot heal what you will not lay a hand on. We start choosing people and hiring people and moving people up who have the liquidity of thought and the nimbleness of mind to have what I call my greatest thinking. You, leader, have influence. You are the person who can change the world.
that tithes, it, 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 it's a signal to the public that you died to yourself and you've been resurrected with Jesus. And so it's a new experience. We submerge you in the water, we bring you back up. So it's an awesome experience. You have died or Think it, about the strategies you, you have seen fail. How do they die? Do they come crashing down with a loud noise? Or do okay. they die Amen. slowly, quietly smothered Amen. by the day Amen. job? Apparently what you think of as the, quote, real world. Every organization and every team will struggle executing on strategy for exactly the same reason. Because of the enormous amount of energy required to maintain the daily operation, also known as the world. The whirlwind suffocates the activities needed to reach your strategic goals. There are rules Amen. for executing in the face yeah, of the world. I said it. I ain't taking it Chris back. McChester, I said it. Y'all all right. It's okay. I know. The global practice leader of execution for Franklin Cutler has spent the last 12 years perfecting the four disciplines of execution. You need to die One, focusing on the wildly important. Two, acting on lead measures. Three, keeping a compelling scoreboard. And four, creating a cadence of accountability. And Jesus sat over against the Chris, a leadership consultant and executive advisor, and beheld how the people Wall cast Street money into the national best And many the that were rich cast in money. In his role developing this execution said, methodology, looked, Chris has driven change efforts at one of the largest convention hotel chains in the country. Now, how many y'all know? Preachers sat there and looked at what you put in. You about to? I'm, I'm, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. All they wanted is that doggone money. But Jesus at a statewide sat there and looked services agency. At what they were putting in the trash. Y'all to a sixty percent reduction in the number of child We'll be, we'll be, we'll be castrated. If we sat there, let me see what you put in. Open Known for Open his high energy and engaging me. presentations, yeah, right. Chris has consulted with many of the world's top brands with and purpose. joins us today to help us get better at executing the And there came a most. certain poor woman Let's welcome with Chris and, and she Jesse. threw in two mics, which Good made morning. a party. And he called unto his disciples, him, his Hi. disciples, and this said is unto him, the largest Verily I say unto you, that this poor widow I have ever has seen cast in my more life. in I mean, there than are so all many they which and, have and cast like, uh, into There's the so room. much love that comes from this room. They just cast um, in without a thought. But honored this woman cast in her whole life. Just, just, just fantastic. She all right, we're going to talk about the disciplines of execution. Could there be two worse words? So Jesus said, I want you to give me your best. Don't just give me just because you just want to and you got it. And you just want to give it. No. All right. It's actually it's more interesting than that. And then he goes on to say, so here's how we for got all they did, years ago, cast a guy by the name of Ram Sharon, a famous she, Harvard business of professor, her, you may know the name, he had just written the book called in, Execution. And, she, and he's trying to get us at Franklin all they did to get into this topic. In of and he asks us two questions. But she, I want you to think about these two questions. Did His cast first question all that she had is what do leaders struggle with more? Do leaders struggle more with strategy or do they all struggle more with execution? How would you answer that? All What's I got in the bank, and you say, give it to you, Jesus. What That's I'm going to do? That's what we said. That's our thought. His next question got that. us. She said, I ain't got nothing. This is all what I got. And God can him? do more what are I got here. Are they educated in execution? And that's the attitude you want to have when it comes to sowing planning. into the kingdom. Right. You the ain't got nothing leaders, to pay your bills. And this is a really important point. This is the one that got us. The thing that leaders are most But that's the truth. Frustrated. I got a bar this way. That's what you're going to do the rest of your life. And I'll you tell you where that frustration lies. Short, this will become immediately apparent if you just look at your own Learn career. We believe that the hardest thing a leader will ever do is drive Every a strategy a need, a or a plan that requires a change so in human behavior. Give. Turn the neighbor. Think about that for a second. We get to Changing give. human behavior easier. We thank God your own behavior easier that we get to right? give. Changing somebody amen, else's amen. behavior. Amen. If you're watching us online, give How about God a whole praise. bunch amen. of somebody else's online, behavior? You can give How about this? Four Even ways. when it's in their you best interest. Have website, you noticed this one? No, you'll like it. This is good for you. you also give through I mean, people are logical. Can, um, They'll change, right? Locate. How about Download, your spouse? Donate. They'll change. They love you. Give the thought app. You can also give through. Um, They'll change for you. Uh, through, My through wife. Our mailing she's right, sitting right there. Address. Says, so you what can mail a check advice for her young uh, friends? Uh, she says, "Honey, don't marry a fixer upper." And I, I'm always 1 -1 -1 -1 in the room. I know exactly what she's talking about. three four four seven four. You can also give it regularly here, and then you can also text to give. If you text to give, you can type in "give" and then the amount you want to give. Amen. Amen. Did I miss a way to give? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, stand to your feet. Let's give. Y'all cry, man. I said, let's so. Let's so. I like it loud. I like it loud up in here. There you go.
blessed because we know the blessing. Amen? We're living our blessed lives. Let's point our hands towards the offering. We're going to go ahead and pray. Father God, we thank you for this seed. We thank you, Father God, that we get to give. We thank you, Lord God, that you said you give seed to the sower, and we have declared that we are seed sowers. So, Lord, thank you that we have an attitude of gratitude when it comes to giving back to you. Oh, God, we thank you that you said give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measures, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto our bosom. So, Lord, we thank you. We call for his money. Come to us right now in abundance. In the name of Jesus. We thank you that the seed will be blessed. We thank you that the seed will be used for the upkeep of your kingdom. Father God, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we praise you. So thank you. Seed, go, grow, and be multiplied, and return back to us in the name of Jesus. Now, Father God, we thank you for this service on today. We thank you, Lord God, what will be said and done in this service. As we continue to give you glory, as we continue to give you praise, we continue to lift up your name. God, you are worthy. We thank you, Lord God, that you're worthy to be praised. It says, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, you are worthy to be praised. So, Lord, we just thank you. We thank you because you're worthy. We thank you, Lord God, that you woke us up this morning, oh God, with a new dawning. You woke us up, Lord God, with the use and activities of our limbs. You woke us up, Lord God, with peace on our hearts. You woke us up, Lord God, with joy in our spirit. You woke us up this morning, oh God, and we was able to look up, and when we looked up, we was able to get up. So this we say, thank you, Lord. Now, Father God, I pray that no one under the sound of my voice will sit here in sickness, pain, discomfort, or dis-ease, for your words say you was wounded for our transgressions, you were bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon you, and with your stripes, we are the healed. So, Father God, we thank you that we are the healed, protecting our health. We're healed in every area of our lives. We're healed in our minds. We're healed in our bodies. We're healed in our spirits. We're healed in our souls. We're healed in our relationships. We're healed in our finances. We're healed in every area of our lives, which equates to nothing missing, nothing lacking, or nothing broken in the name of Jesus. Now, Father God, I pray that you anoint their ears to hear, their heart to receive, and their spirit to contain your word. It's in the almighty, all-powerful name of Jesus that I pray. All that agree with that prayer, say amen. Well, give God, give God praise. Wakanda, amen. You can have your seat. Thank you, Lord. been blessed in this series. We're living our blessed life. Amen? Amen. amen. Has this series blessed you? Yes. Amen. Amen. We're living our blessed life. Amen. Amen. So today we'll be ending this series and the next week, well, week after next, we'll start a new series. And our new series we've entitled, What Did Jesus Do? Oh man, you don't want to miss that. What did Jesus do? Remember back in the day we used to have, what would Jesus do? Well, the fact of the matter is we don't know what would Jesus do. We know what Jesus did. And so we're going to show you in Scripture what did Jesus do, not what would Jesus do. Amen? And so when we begin to pattern our life after Jesus, we can't go wrong. In every situation, what did Jesus do about the sick? What did Jesus do about a shortage? He even told, uh, he told one of the disciples, go down there and put your hand in the mouth of the fish. You, you lacking your taxes? Go down there. What did Jesus do? Jesus had an answer for every situation. And so his answer was in his word, and his word was, was in him. So whatever he said was his word, and his word came true. So what he said is what he did. So what did Jesus do? Amen? So I'm excited about that, man. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna go for a ride uh, on that series. Amen? All right. So we're going to we're gonna continue talking um, today about living my blessed life. And so we're going to finish up on living my blessed life today. And as I told you that living our blessed life, come from, and our base scripture has been John 10, 9 and 10, that talks about uh, why did Jesus really come? And you're living your blessed life. We know that he came because he came that we might have life, and what? Life more abundantly. So as we begin to look at that, I want you to just take that with you as you begin to think about living your blessed life. Jesus came that I might have life, and I might have life more abundantly. In other words, that's translated, I might live my life to the fullest till it overflow. That's when you say that you have life in abundance. Live your life to the fullest until it overflows. Can anybody say that they've been living their life like that? Amen. I have. I don't care what happened. I'm living my blessed life. I don't care what it looks like. I'm living my blessed life. 
I don't care what, what, who say where I'm living my blessed life. You got to get in your mind, I'm living my blessed life. Because situations going to happen. You just make a shift. You just, you just change your perspective and you, and you move forward. You don't go backwards. This pandemic, man, has taken some people all the way back. They don't jump all the way off the cliff. I mean, they don't, they don't, they don't hit rock bottom. But the Lord said, listen here, even when you feel like you're at your rock bottom, when you're living your blessed life, if you're at the end of your rope, tie a knot at the rope and keep on hanging on. He said, I got you. I'll never leave you, and I'll never forsake you. You're living your blessed life. Oh, y'all listen to me. Go to John 10, 10. Let's go to John. Let's see it on the, on the, on the screen. Let's see what it says. John 10, 10. Acts chapter verse number 9. We'll just read it from the message Bible from the screen. <clears throat> John. I am the gate. Anyone who goes through me will be cared for. We'll freely go in and freely go out and find pasture. Now, you notice I keep playing this and, and having you to see this every, every week. Because you need to understand there's no other gate that you can get through other than Jesus. He said, I am the gate. And anyone, did he have a person on there? No. Did it have a gender on there? No. He didn't say man, woman, boy, girl. He said anyone who goes through me will be cared for. So we got to stop putting limitations on what God can do. He said anyone. That means anyone. Big, small, fat, skinny. It don't matter who you're. Red, yellow, green, black, white. It don't matter. He said anyone who will go through me will be cared for. So why would you try to go through anybody else to get care? other than Jesus? Why do you tell anybody else your problems other than Jesus? Why do you try to use your, flat, uh, your platform on social media to tell everybody else about your issues other than Jesus? I'm a social media junkie, some folks. Just everything social media, I got to have it, got to get me some, got to put a post out there, like it. <laughs> some folks ain't going to like it because they don't like you. They ain't going to never like your post. But then you, 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 you measure yourself by what pe other people say. He said, I'm the gate. Anyone go through me will be cared for. So why are you thinking about and worry about what everybody else is saying and what they're doing? They don't care for you anyway. How many of y'all know that? How many of you know most of them are cowards anyway because what they say on Facebook, they'll never say to your face. Y'all know folks get some courage. They drink this courage juice when they're behind them buttons. But get them out of face. I, I wish you would say it now. Say it now. Like, I ain't been saying all my life. Say it now. I wish you. But they weigh in 10 bucks too. They're going to say what they say. Push a button. Push a button. And you just put your emoji. Smile. <laughs> you ain't going to steal my piece. Emoji. Hallelujah. Knock this one out the park. God, thank you, Jesus. I've been delivered from the old me. But he said, anyone who goes through me will be cared for. Watch it. You'll go in freely. And you'll go out freely. That means ain't nothing going to hold me back. I got freedom to go. I got freedom to come. I ain't bounded by nobody. I'm connected to Jesus. So there is no bound in Jesus. He said, you'll find pasture. In other words, you'll find a resting place. You'll find a place where you can land in me, and you'll be covered and surrounded by my love. He said, so how about trying my love for real? He said, some of y'all heard about me, but you don't really know me. He said, but when you try my love, you'll find green pasture. You'll be able to chill. I'll take a chill pill. Keep going. Watch this. He says, a thief is only there to steal and to kill and to destroy. I don't know about you, but I hate a thief. When I say hate a thief, I strongly dislike them. I don't hate them, but I hate their ways. Let me put it like that. Pastor, you hate, I think you hate nobody. Okay, let me rephrase that. I hate the thieves' ways. I ain't never heard nobody say, I love you, thief. Come on in here and steal from me. I ain't never heard nobody say that. Have y'all? No. So it said, and a thief is only there to steal and to kill and to destroy. I come so that they can have real and eternal life more and more, more better, more better, more better life than they ever dreamed of. He said, live life to the fullest. In other words, I want you to enjoy life here on, on earth. Don't worry about the high by and by. Because so many times we heard in our life, oh, when I get to heaven. Everything going to be all right. I'm going to go down the streets of gold, and I'm going to be with Jesus, and all going to be well. He said, I want you to live that life here on earth. Why you got to wait to get to heaven to live the blessed life? Why you got to wait till you get to heaven to enjoy the blessings of this life? 
So we, we've been taught that for, for a long time. And some people think you can't have fun in Christendom. You can't have fun in Christendom. No, you're supposed to be serious. Y'all can't laugh. You better wear your long skirt. And don't you dare wear no makeup. I dare you, Jezebel. Right, that's what they taught us back in the day. Don't you wear no red, nothing. <laughs> Women better have their head covered. That's where I come from. I don't know. Y'all. They, had, they had what we call prayer caps. Woman can't sing in the choir unless she had a prayer cap. They had a prayer cap for every outfit. I said, what you say? <laughs> choir roll with a prayer cap. I ain't lying. I'm telling y'all for real. You, you, and then you better not get up in that choir stand if you ain't got your head covered. They were serious about that. You sit your tail down. Go borrow one. But y'all know the mother's boys sit over there to the right. All of them got one in their pocket. But here, baby, go on up there and say. <laughs> but we know no better. We, we, we were stuck in bondage because what we had on didn't matter if we had Jesus in the inside. Amen. See, that we were too focused on the outside, and we were messed up on the inside. But he said, I come that you might have life, and life to the full, to the overflow. Don't you let nobody put you in bondage with their doctrine. Amen. You better take that doctrine on somewhere else. Amen. I ain't going to be in bondage by that no more. I'm free. I'm free. Turn that side and say, neighbor, I'm free. I will not be in bondage anymore in my life. Give God praise. Give God praise. He said, I want you to dream. I want you to dream better, higher, bigger. What you want to be? What you want to be in God? Tell him what you want. Now, the one thing they used to say that I used to like and now understand, uh, Jesus on the main line. Call him up and tell him what you want. I, I believe that because what they really said is anytime you pray, he's going to answer. See, that translation was Jesus on the main line. Well, the main line to me saying that whenever I call on Jesus, late in the midnight hour, he'll turn it all around. He said, he'll hear me every single time. But we used to just sing, oh, Jesus on that main line, tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus on that main. Anybody grew up on that side? Yeah. We, we know about that, right? But what they should have been teaching us is this. Yes, Jesus is on the main line, but every time I have an issue, I need to take it to him in prayer. Because prayer changes everything. It ain't just about me singing that song. It's about my relationship with him and knowing that I'm a child of the king. And so when I pray, he always hears my prayer. And when you begin to get that in your spirit, Jesus, I'm going through, Lord. I need your help. Give me wisdom about this situation. Lord, my children acting crazy. Give me wisdom about this situation. Lord, I don't have peace on my job. Give me peace. That surpasses all understanding. He said, when you hear me, when you pray, I'll always hear you. You belong to me. I am a child of the most high God. So live your life to the fullest. Don't be in bondage no more. You free. You free for real. For real, for real. Because he said live real eternal life on earth. <laughs> I want y'all to get that. Go back to the last script. Y'all got to see this. I ain't pointing this out last time, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to focus on this. This last sentence. Get it in your spirit. He said, I came so they can have real what does real mean? Not imitation. Not fake. The real thing. They used to say Coke is a real thing, right? <laughs> or, or whether Pepsi is a choice of a new generation. <laughs> but he said, I'm the real thing. Coke ain't got nothing on me. I'm the real thing. He said, I come that you have real and eternal life. Real and, and go together. It's a conjunction. He said, real means there's no fake in me. Longevity means eternity and more better than you ever dreamed of. Jesus. Man, tell me who wouldn't serve a God like that. Ever than I ever dreamed of. God, you got me. God, you're a bad man. Thank you, Jesus. I've been delivered. I ain't letting you put me in no bondage no more. I am free. I'm taking off my grave clothes. I remember when God called for Lazarus. Come forth up out of that grave. And Lazarus came forth, but he was still bound. But he took off those grave clothes. And when he took off those grave clothes, he was able to go about the business. But the Bible said he had been dead for four days. See, some of y'all think, he said, he said I, 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 I want you to come to have life, the real and eternal. Lazarus was dead for four days, and then his sisters got an attitude with Jesus. And they said, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. But Jesus said, listen here, when I do show up, I'm showing up because I'm the real thing, and God's going to get glory. Lazarus, come forth out of that grave. Yes. And Lazarus came forth. What are you saying, Pastor? He said, when you know that I'm the real thing, you'll wait on me. 
My timing is impeccable. There's nobody who can do the timing that I have. I'm right on time every time. I'm never late. I'm in charge of time. I'll hold up time for you. Good God from Zion. He said, I redeem the time. I'm a time keeper. Only thing I want you to be is a God chaser. When you're a God chaser, I'm a time keeper, and all is well. Good God, God. He said, so I'm real better life than I ever dreamed of. Baby, you better start dreaming again. You better start dreaming. I'm out of debt. All my debts are paid. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm the lender, not the bar. You better start dreaming of the life you want to live. He's already made you a promise. Oh, y'all listen to me. Okay, I'm, I'm, try, I'm getting ahead of myself. We're living the Zoe life. The blessed, kind, God life. That Zoe life here on earth. Now, he didn't promise us, listen. He didn't say you ain't going to have no hard time because some Christians get it twisted. Well, God, yo, Lord, I got too much uh, month and I got money. Here we go again. Here we go again, Lord. I ain't got enough, Lord. And then you, you won't stop there. You're going to say, Lord, I ain't going to never have enough. No, you won't. Now you don't change the game. You're going to have what you said. You ain't going to never have enough because you said it. Oh, oh, here's the other one. Oh, God, if it ain't one thing, it's another. Anybody heard that? If it ain't one thing, it's another. <laughs> well, the only other thing it should be is you that living the blessed life. God, thank you for the overflow. Thank you because you promised me you wouldn't leave me. So don't keep saying that crazy stuff. That's cliche stuff. And y'all think it sounds good. Them nursery rhyme. It's cute because they rhyme. <laughs> Just like it was. Now lay me down to sleep. Y'all remember that old nurse? When you did that prayer? Yeah. Thank the Lord, my soul he keep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I die before I wake. <laughs> Praise the Lord, my soul he take. Y'all remember those nursery rhymes? That's all we knew. What are you saying, Pastor? When you know better, you do better. So those types of things, some of you are still living your life on those little baby prayers. Some of the little prayers that your mama taught you when you get ready to get tucked in the bed, you've been living your life off that baby prayer. He says, it's time for you to grow up and live a real life in me. It's time for you to live the eternal life in me. It's time for you to understand a relationship in me. Yes. I ain't even got started yet, y'all. I'm, I'm so sorry. I don't know why I'm going this way, but somebody need to hear this. And then you also say the other other prayer when you're blessing the food. God is good. God is great. And we thank thee for our food. Bow our head, we must be fed. Give us love, our daily bread. Y'all, that's so cute. That's real cute. That's when you're two years old, though. It's cute when you're two, but when you're 50, you need to change your prayer life. Something wrong with that if you keep on saying that prayer, you're 50 now. You need to grow up in Christ. Oh, y'all listen to me. You hear me? Your prayer life got it. Lord, I thank you for this food. Bless the hand that prepared the food for the good nourishment of my body. Thank you for the work of ministry that you've called me to do because this food will be good for my nourishment. Thank you, Lord. I bless the hand that prepared it, Lord God. It will be a blessing to me and everybody that prepared it. Thank you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the food. It ain't got to be no long, drawn-out prayer, but it ain't got to be that little nursery rhyme prayer. I need y'all to grow some more, all right? <laughs> you need to be stressed. Grow a little bit more. Y'all get mad at me, I'm going to tell you the truth. Tell you the truth, shame the devil. It's okay. I said it. I ain't taking it back. Hallelujah. He said, I want you to have real and eternal life. More and better life than you ever dreamed of. Anybody ever been to Paris? Not yet. I'm going. This is, I'm going. I ain't been yet. But I can dream of Paris, friends. Patty. See the Patty. Polly. <laughs> I can dream of the Paris, the Eiffel Tower. I can dream of it, the blessed life. So what am I saying? Think about your best place you ever want to go. And God said, my blessings for you on your life is better than that. He said, I'm the real thing. There is no substitute for what I'll do in your life. He said, I'll make you over for real. If you really want a real life, get in me. Hide yourself in me. Take me to the rock, God, that's higher than me. Hallelujah. 
I was praying this morning. I was thinking as I was walking my puppy. I was just thinking about some old songs that we used to say. We used to sing, uh, um, um, uh, uh, the bridegroom is coming. Anybody remember that? Listen up. Are you aware? You don't remember that? What's going to take place in the air? We'll be caught up to meet him. Yep. And I said, Lord, I'm ready to meet you. I ain't ready to die, but I'm ready to meet you. Talk to me, Jesus, right now as I'm walking on this street. See, some of y'all think you got to die to meet Jesus. No, if you're talking to him every day, follow his counsel. In obedience, you're meeting Jesus. If you're doing what he told you to do, you're meeting Jesus. If you're being obedient to his word, you're meeting Jesus. Okay. Go to Proverbs. Go to Proverbs. Proverbs 13. 16 in verse number three. Y'all all right so far? And so today we're going to tell you we're living the blessed life when everything we touch with our hands are blessed. Everything you touch with your hands are blessed. You know you're living the blessed life. Well, how do you do that? Change your position. Go to, go to um, Proverbs. Proverbs 16 and three. And this is how you do it. He said, and I'm reading from the King James, and I'll read it from the Amplified. Commit thy ways unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. He said, everything you do, commit your way unto the Lord. And he said, your thoughts. He said, even what you think going to be established for me. The Amplified says this. Commit your works to the Lord. Submit and trust. Somebody say submit and trust. My works to him. And then watch it. And your plans will succeed if you respond to his will and his guidance. So he told you, in order to be live a blessed life, commit your works to me. Stop doing what you're doing for yourself and do what you do for me. If you got skills, talents, and ability, submit your works unto me, and everything you plan will go well. Amen. Are you listening to me? And then I like the answer. He said, not only, he said, commit your way. See, that's something about commitment. That, I don't know what's going on today. These folk don't like to commit to nothing. If it ain't going to benefit you, I ain't committing. What's in it for me, Pastor? You want me to show up at the church for what? <laughs> well, brother, the church needs to be clean. Well, I got to clean my own house. Don't you know? I got other stuff to do. Oh, yeah, I'm coming down the street. But I'm saying commit unto him. See, so when we take the attitude that I'm committing everything to God, even a small It'd be the details. You clean up the church, that's a time you can be in here with you and the Lord by yourself. And he can speak to you and everything about you can change in that midst. But see, you're too busy. I ain't got time to commit that. Lord, let me commit something else. <laughs> what else you need, Lord? I ain't trying to clean. I don't clean my own house. What else you need me to do, Lord? I ain't, ain't going to do that one. <laughs> I ain't doing that one. I know some folks have said that. I ain't going to do that one. Let me, let, let me um, spray paint the building. I'll do that. But it said, commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts. What are you thinking? He said, and your thoughts, what are you thinking, shall be established. Hallelujah. Your thoughts shall be established. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for God to establish my thoughts. I'm ready for God to take me higher than I've ever been. I'm ready to live the blessed life here on earth. I'm ready to receive all the promises that he said he'll load me up with. But in, in order to do that, I've got to commit my way. I've got to trust in him. I've got to commit everything, and I've got to submit. You know what submit means? Submit means to come under. To come under the authority and trust in the authority of the one you're submitted to. So he said, I need you to co commit, submit, and come into under my authority. And when you do that, everything that you plan will go great. Oh, how many of you want your way to go great? He says, submit your words to me. Some of you got skills that's impeccable. Submit them to God. He said, everything you plan. You want your business to go well? Submit your works unto God. Amen. You, you, you want to establish a, 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 a home for the, for, the, for the children, orphan home? Submit your works unto God. You want to be able to help those in need? Submit your works unto, the God, you, unto God. You want to be able to have more and to overflow? Submit your works unto God. Are you listening? Amen. And then he says, and your plans. Somebody say, my plans my will, succeed will succeed only when, only when I, commit I commit 
and submit them to God. Give God glory. Hallelujah. Let's see what Proverbs 16 and 3 says in the Message Bible. Proverbs 16 says, put God in charge. I love this one. <clears throat> put God in charge. Somebody say, put God in charge. Put God in charge. Of your work, then what you plan will take place. So that's why what you plan is on hold. God ain't in charge. That's why what you're planning has been on hold because you're trying to do it your own way in your own time. He said, put God in charge. When you put God in charge of all your work, then what you have planned will take place. I need y'all to hear that because some of y'all have planned some stuff. It ain't happening for you. You're looking at everybody else and you're jealous. Well, Lord, it happened for them. He said, well, did you put me in charge? Did you put me in charge of all your business affairs? Did you put me in charge of, the, of, the, uh, of your real estate? Did you put me in charge of your will? Did you put me in charge of your insurance policy? Did you put me in charge of everything? Did you put me in charge of your family affairs? Did you put me in charge of your finances? Did you put me in charge of everything? Lord, I don't know about that one. I can put you in charge of my children. You can have these old rich, ratchet children. But I ain't putting you in charge of my finances, God. I can't trust you with a dollar. But you can have these kids. They need you, Jesus. You save the old wretch like me. I know you can change that child of mine too. Lord help him. I'm going to put him in your hand. So we want to pick and choose what we put in God's hand. God said, put me in charge of everything. That's what's wrong. You can't pick and choose what your God going to be in control of. He said, put me in charge of your work, period. And then, comma, what you have planned will take place. Promise. Let me say that again. He said, put God in charge of your work, period. Ain't nothing else. Comma, and then what you have planned will take place. Promise. <laughs> so make a statement. And he followed his statement with a promise. That's what God always does. He'll make a statement, and everything he says, he followed up with a promise. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God. I'm just getting started, y'all. Y'all all right in here? I ain't going to keep you too long, because I tell you, I just, I just love the Lord. Let's keep going. So when everything is in your hand, you are truly, truly blessed of the Lord. Everything is in your hand. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse number 29. And just put it on the screen for the sake of time. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 14, verse 29. I'm going to put it on the screen for the sake of time. I, I need to get somewhere else. Keep it in reserve for the Levites who won't get any property or inheritance as you will. And for the foreigner, the orphan and the widow who live in your neighborhood. That way, they'll have plenty to eat, and God, your God, will bless you in all your work. So he's talking here. In order for you to be blessed with everything in your hands, you need to become a tither. Uh-oh. Oh, oh y'all got quiet on me. He said, your tithes, keep them in reserve for the Levites. The Levites didn't get an inheritance. He said the Levites were the, among the the, the, the tribe, the, the priestly tribe. He said, so keep them in reserve for the Levite who won't get property, who won't get inheritance, as you will. He said, I've given you something, but you've got to be able to use what you got to help the Levites. Okay. He said, now when you begin to use your inheritance that you're going to get to help the Levites, which is the priest, the foreigner, and the orphaners, and the widow who live in your neighborhood. You ain't got to go to Africa. There's some living in your neighborhood. You ain't got to go on a mission trip. That's something living around the corner next door to you. But you, you got your, your, your mind set on Africa. You forget about the work in your neighborhood. He said, so I need you to understand that somebody next door needs your assistance. He said, but when you do that, you look out for them. You look out for the priests. You look out for the foreigners. He said, that way, they'll have plenty to eat. In other words, ain't nobody going to go hungry when you become a tither and you bring all the tithes in the storehouse so there'll be meat in my house and prove me and see if I won't open up the window of heaven and pull you out a blessing, you won't have room enough to receive. He said, but you got to get that mindset, I'm a giver so that somebody else can be blessed. Mm, mm. And then I can really work with your hands. Mm. I can work with your hands when you begin to not be selfish. When you don't hide your hand and show me your hand, I can work with it. Mm. So many times we hide our hand. 
Or what they say, throw a rock and hide your hand. Hide, put your hand in your pocket. He said, I need to see your hands. Show me your hands so I can work with your hands. Because your blessings are in your hands. He said, I'll bless the work of your hand. That way, they'll have plenty to eat. And God, your God, will bless you. What? In all your work. He'll bless you in all your work. So why is it a problem? He'll bless you in all your work. How many of you want to be blessed in all your work? So I admonish you, if you're going to bless in all your work, be a tither. And he said, I will establish blessings upon your hands. That is a seed that you sow. And as long as there's heaven and earth, there'll be seed time and harvest. Amen. I know it's quiet. I ain't going to stay there. I'm going to keep going. Y'all pass. You, don't, you got it. I got to throw it in every now and then. I got to throw it in. Because I want y'all, we, God wants you to be blessed. So do we. Amen. We want you to have some stuff. Yeah. To be owners and not renters. To be lenders and not borrowers. To be above only and never beneath. To be able to have a bank account of your own that's not in a negative every once in a while. It's always overflowing because you're giving to others that are in need and God continues to supply your storehouse. We want you to be in a position where you can buy a car and don't have a car. No, you own the title. We need you to be in a position where you can buy a house with cash and not worry about a mortgage. Your mind got to change when you become a tither in the house of God. He said, I can do it if you turn your work on me, I can show you who I am. You can live the blessed life. You don't have to be in debt. In fact, Romans 13 and 8 says, oh, no man, but to love him. So he said, the only way you're going to get there, become a tither. Sow seed and expect your harvest. And understand, your harvest ain't going to come when you want it. It's going to come when you're ready to accept it. In other words, your harvest is only going to come when you're matured enough to handle the harvest. Yes, Some of us, harvests have been delayed because you're immature. He said, I'm holding it up until you're ready. I release it. And when I release it, I'm going to redeem the time. So everything you thought your lowest, I'm going to give you double for your trouble, beauty for your ashes. I'm going to hold up until you're ready. Oh, God. He said, but then, he said, you'll have plenty to eat and everybody around you going to eat good. Everybody around you going to eat good. And you're going to live the good life and overflow here on earth. And only then will he bless you in all your work. Not part of my work, but all my work. God, I'm casting these cares upon you for you care for me. Bless all of the works of my hands. Oh, Rabbi Shatta. That's a prayer that I pray over every covenant partner. Lord, bless the works of the hand. Let everything the hand touch prosper. Thank you, Lord God. We are the hand, and we are not the tail. We are above all. We are never believe. We are owners and not renters. Oh, God. He said, all I need you to do is get in position and change your mindset. For I come to break down this poverty spirit in the city of Ocala. I come to break down this poverty spirit in the Marion County. I come to break down those mindsets who've been shackled and chained. I am the Lord thy God. And if I said it, I'm able to perform it. He said, I'm ready to release some things. I'm releasing goodness. I'm releasing blessing until it overflow for those who keep their minds stayed on me. Oh, God. Keep your mind stayed on me. I don't care what you're going through. Yeah, I see your tears. I know your pain. But I need you to trust in me. He said, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all thy words, Woo! I'll direct your path. But you got to give it to me. You got to trust in me. You got to roll your cares and commit your ways to me. Oh, I am an overcomer. Glory to God. I will recover all. I hear the Lord say, I will recover all. He said, some of you have been, you've been robbed. The thief have come to steal from you. But he said, you will recover all. Oh, says the Lord. Thus says the Lord. He said, I come that you might have life. And that life more abundantly. Oh, no, you haven't lost. You just won. You haven't lost. Your position just changed. You haven't lost. You've been elevated. You haven't been demoted. You've been promoted. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Oh, God. 
Oh God, hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm. Mm. The Lord says, I'm doing a new thing. Can't you perceive it? Don't you know it? I'm making rivers in the desert. I'm doing a new thing. I'm creating paths that did not exist. I'm doing a, a new thing. Whew. Roll your works upon me. Commit your ways unto me. And I will establish all of your plans. Oh God, you're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And we thank you, Father. We thank you for the overflow. We thank you for the abundance. We thank you for blessing the works of our hands. In the name of Jesus. I will bless the works of your hand. Everything your hand will touch shall prosper. When you commit your ways unto me, I am the Lord. I change not. I am the Lord. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Robo Koraba Sunday. Yes, God. Oh, yes, God. I believe I receive. We believe we receive. We shall not lack anything. We are overcomers. God. Thank you, Father. I will bless the works of your hands. I will establish you on higher ground. I will elevate you like you never have been before. I am the Lord. I will change your course of your trajectory. I am the Lord that always makes straight your cricket ways. Thus says the Lord. Oh God. Oh God, we receive it in the name of Jesus. We receive it in the name of Jesus. We receive it in the name of Jesus. Oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. Step into his presence. If you came to receive something from the Lord, step into his presence. The atmosphere has just shifted. He said, I am here and I am doing something great in you. Woo. Oh, lift up your head, all ye gates, and let the King of glory come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord God mighty. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We will obey, God. Yes, God, we will obey. Oh, God. We will obey. We will obey, Father. Oh, Ro. Oh God, your word says we're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come. We're blessed when we go. Bless all going out. Bless all coming in. Oh God, we thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Oh, step into it right now. Step into your blessed life right now. Step into the realm of your blessings right now. He said, I'm here. Don't miss this opportunity. Step into your blessings right now. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Glory to God. 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 Glory, glory. 
Let blessings permeate every aspect of your life. Let blessings permeate every area of your life. That includes your health. That includes your relationships. That includes your finances. You're blasting the city. Oh God, oh God. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on and enter in, enter in, oh Lord, enter in. Thank you, Lord. In your presence, there's fullness of joy. In your presence. There's life overflowing in your presence. It's where we want to be, Jesus. Bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continue. Got more scripture, but I'm done. That's the Holy Spirit. Stand to your feet. Go ahead and stand to your feet and begin to worship God. Begin to give God worship. Go all in because he's, he's doing something new in your life. You'll never be the same from this day forward. Your life will never be the same. Step into the blessed life. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. You're worthy, God. You're worthy. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. You're worthy. Yes, Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah. We are most blessed when we obey God. And so we must understand that our obedience is better than our sacrifice. Obey God with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. He said, but in all your ways, acknowledge me and I will direct your path. God is directing your path. He's directing your path. So whatever you need, it's in the atmosphere. Whatever you need, it's in the atmosphere. So right now, wherever you are, whatever you've been holding and you've been carrying, I want you to make your way to this altar and lay it here at the altar. He says, it's time for you to lay it at my feet. I am the Lord and I'm doing something new. So if that's you, Carrying unforgiveness. You've been harboring. Oh, up my shit, shit. You've been harboring things in your spirit. He said, I want you to make your way to this altar. Today is your receiving day. You shall receive from the Lord. Oh, on this day. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you need healing in your body, make your way to this altar. If you need healing in your spirit, make your way to this altar. Whatever you need, make your way. It's here. It's here right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. My God, my God, my God. Waymaker, promise keeper. Waymaker, promise keeper. Waymaker, promise keeper. Waymaker. Keeper. 
Thank you. We give God all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. We make no apologies for what the Lord has done. And I believe your life will never be the same. Amen? Thank you. Well, if you're watching us online, if you're here in the sanctuary on today, we thank God for you and we've been praying for you. If you don't know Jesus, it's Jesus we were talking about, who is the Lord over your life, the Lord over your mind, your body, your spirit, and your soul. Today, we're asking you to make a decision to give your life to Christ. And we ask you to start with this decision. He said, if you confess your mouth and believe in your heart that Christ was raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And that's according to Romans 10, 9, and 10. So if that's you today, you're watching us, you're in the sanctuary, and you're not saved, oh, we want you to make a decision today to give your life to Christ. So we have a prayer that we'd like for you to pray with us. It's called My Decision. And if you'll pray this prayer with us, we believe today you receive Jesus. From this day forward, I will follow your ways. Jesus, you are my risen Savior. You are the Redeemer of the world. I repent of my sins now, and I receive your love and forgiveness. Today and forevermore, I give my life to you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Family and friends, if you prayed that prayer, welcome to the body of Christ. Come on and give God praise for those that enter into the body of Christ. Second, if you're here today, you say, well, Pastor, I want to receive, I'm saved, but I want to receive the gift of the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. If that's you today, raise your hand if you're in the sanctuary and type in Holy Spirit as you're watching us online. We'd love for you to have this gift. It is a gift to the believer. It is evident to the unbeliever. This Speaking in tongues is one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It's not the only one. But oh, what a powerful gift it is when you can speak to your heavenly Father in your heavenly language and the devil can't interrupt you. He can't, interp he can't interpret it because he don't understand what you're saying. But God knows what you're saying. So if that's you today, 
and you want to receive this gift, raise your hand, and we'll pray with you. Next, you say, well, Pastor, I'm here, and I want to rededicate my life. I think some of you who was here at the altar today, that's what we did. You just repented and rededicated, <clears throat> and you gave it to God. And now go forward from here. If you're watching us online, we want to give you an opportunity. Rededicate. <clears throat> Reposition yourself. Get to know this Jesus that we're talking about and experience him for real. That you'll live a real and eternal life. Amen. You can live the blessed life here on earth. Give yourself to Jesus. So, man, if that's you, type in rededication. Last but not least, if you're here in your sanctuary or you're watching us online and you've decided, I've been coming to this church. I've been watching you on, online. I'm ready to commit. I want to be able to, I want to be a covenant partner. We've been praying for you. That God will see you from the north, the south, the east, and the west with the vision of Revealing Truth Outreach Christian Center already tattooed on your heart. So if that's you and you know you've heard God today, why don't you get your things and come join me here at the altar. If you're watching the line, type in covenant partner. We would love to have you a part of our family. Amen. Amen. And one thing I always say, <clears throat> never join a church based on emotions. Know that you were led here. Because once you join on your emotions, then your emotions got to try to keep you here. But when you know it's where you're supposed to be, join in. Commit your works unto the Lord, and he will establish the works of your hand. And so we ask that you do that. So if that's you, get your things to come join us. If you're, if you're watching us online, type in Covenant Partner. Amen. We are believing God for you. Not only that you're coming from the north, the south, east, and the west of Ocala, but the north, south, east, and west of the United States. We're thinking, believing God, you're going to come from different countries, different continents, different cities, towns, and states. And you're coming right here, and we'll be right here waiting for you to get in your position to help join us in this work. Amen? Amen. All right. Well, none came. There's always room. Hallelujah. Give God glory. Did you enjoy it, God, today? Amen. Amen. Pastor T, you want to come and dismiss us? Please say something to the people. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. <coughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> amen. Amen. <coughs> well, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. We, we, we always expect him, and we are never disappointed. Amen. amen. Amen, amen. Well, at this time, we are going to go ahead, um, and we're going to be dismissed. Praise God. Amen. Um, just quick reminders, um, we do have Wednesday services at 7 p.m. Amen. Yes. And then on Saturday, this Saturday. Will be men oh, women. men and women's breakout sessions is this is this um, Wednesday. So women are on Zoom, and men are here at in the sanctuary. And then if you have not yet received your invitation to um, the party and you RSVP'd, they are being given out today. Amen? All right. Well, let's hold up those holy hands and let's get ready to be dismissed. And repeat after me. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength. My Redeemer, um, hug your neighbors or high-five them, and you are dismissed. No, no, first-time guest, first-time guest, um, we have an appreciation of love for you. So if you will come up, thank you.
this life is over I'm gonna live again I'm gonna trade this cross for a crown No, this is not the end And when you call my name I will take my right There's a mansion in glory yet you're gonna meet me there. I shall not.